I feel like we got to get better today. Um, that's where my focus is. I'm not worried about two weeks from now. I'm worried about practice here in an hour or so. And uh, I've really liked their willingness to come in the gym and work. We've made practice real. You know, we, we've been contentious a little bit the last couple weeks. Um, we've tried to create some adversity, and they've they've responded in, in an admirable way for the most part. And I think you have to do that in the preseason. You can't wait for, you know, adversity and things to happen when game starts. you got to try to create that in the preseason a little bit. And we, we've been probably pushing them harder in the last eight, nine days, maybe than any point since I've been the coach here. And I've liked how they've responded, but I'm not satisfied. I want to get better today. And, and we do have quite a bit of work to do over the next two weeks. But I like our team. There's certainly a lot more out there. Um, from an offensive standpoint, there's a lot more versatility with size and positions. And so there's a lot of things to work with. Uh, but, shoot, I'm, I'm glad we got two weeks of practice before we play a real game. What does that adversity look like that you're trying to create for them? Well, you just, you just try to create real environments that they have to compete and dig in and fight through, whether it's fatigue whether it's a long practice, whether it's a competitive situation, you know, whether it's challenging them to kind of dig in and find more, you know. And so and maybe it's not real adversity, but you create basketball-type adversity. You know, there's all kinds of adversity in life. We're just playing basketball. But you try to create adverse situations that they have to fight through and that they have to fight through together. And so we push pretty hard here over the last week or so. And it's, 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 it's fun because I felt comfortable that this group can handle it. And so far, they've, they've done a nice job of it. Whenever anyone's asked so far this season about the transfers or the new players on the team, you consistently talk about the guys returning and how proud you are of them. How has that general been so far with the new guys mixed with the players? <clears throat> well, off the court, it's been, been kind of neat, you know. You have six incoming players, and this group to, to date seems to get along about as good as any group I've been around. I mean, they hang out together. You know, that, you know, like anybody, they have guys they're closer with than others, but you see different combinations of guys together every day, whether it's, you know, on Instagram. That, you, see, you see them on Instagram now. Lots, lots changed in a couple of years. But, you know, whether you see them posting pictures on Instagram or out doing things in the community, you know, whether it's in the office or on campus, like you see different groups of guys hanging out. And when we've had them together as a team, it's obvious that they all kind of get along. And it's, it's neat that that is developed in such a short period of time. You hope it continues on the court. Um, you know, I give our returning players a lot of credit. That they've welcomed guys with open arms. They've tried to be helpful getting guys assimilated. So from that, that perspective, I've been pleased. Who's been the most interesting crew that you weren't expecting? The most interesting crew hanging out? <laughs> you know, it's uh, like Daniel Skillings is so funny because he hangs out with everybody. You know, I mean, I, I don't just mean everybody on the team, just everybody that will talk to him, you know. He's, he's, <laughs> and anybody that knows him will laugh when they hear that because they know it's true. I mean, I was – he was just in my office, and, you know, I, trust me, I don't feel special because he was probably in every office up there on the sixth floor. And then I'm running down to get here, and I, I did run because I was trying to get down here to not be late for you guys. And on the way down, I saw him in the, in the, the cheerleading coach's office. So, I mean, like, you know, Dan Skillings is, is, is just an outgoing, you know, guy and, and a young young guy. And he seems to get along with just about anybody that comes to come to contact with. So that's been pretty fun. Just one more quick follow-up. You mentioned Instagram. How plugged in are you on social media seeing what these guys are up to? You know, I, it's like the one area where I feel old. You know, I, I never have identified as older. I still, you know, I shoot in my head. I think I can still go out and make a bunch of threes and jam it and that type of thing. But, uh, yeah, so I've always thought of myself as, as young and energetic. But when it comes to social media and technology, that's where I'm starting to feel old. That and the music that they listen to, right? So um, I'm not going to say I'm the most up-to-date on all the, the social media, but I do enjoy following not just our current players, but our former players, my former players. It's just been a great way to stay connected. So I'm not so savvy at the posting and all that. I try, um, but it's been a great way for me to stay connected with people. Well, in the preseason practice now, are there any guys that you maybe didn't anticipate standing out that are standing out more now that you guys are on the floor every day? 
you know, n- nobody in particular stands out. I mean, every everybody's had their moments, right? I mean, what's neat is the depth on the roster, and if if you day in day out, there's not a guy on this team that's on scholarship that doesn't show you why he belongs here. So that's been pretty neat. But we have expe- high expectations for all the guys. That's why we gave them scholarships and. Um, I don't think anybody's surprised us in any crazy way, but but everybody's done a nice job. You spoke about how well the guys are gelling. Um, you also last week talked a lot about Lou and what he brings on the court. What does he bring just from a personality and relationship standpoint that you've been able to see? Lou. Yeah, Kalus, he's really laid back off the court, you know, really quiet. I wouldn't say introverted because he's actually very social and and likes to get out and meet people and do things, but he's just got a quiet way about him um, and a quiet affect, uh, but but thoughtful, you know. Um, I, I think people gravitate towards him. You know, you can see that again. He's not he, – him and Dan are – and Dan's the guy that's just, just talking up a storm and clues a little quiet but still social. So I think he's uh, – what's neat is we have these three transfers that all have a ton of experience. And it's not just their basketball experience. It's their maturity, right, of being around people and, and being on a campus and being in a college basketball program. And then Kalu's a really good example of that. You mentioned Dan Skillings. Obviously, the player he is off the court. Just talk about what you've seen from him on the court. Obviously, he had the transformation after working with Mike Rayfeld this summer. He's put on about 15, 20 pounds. What have you seen from him as the season's getting underway? Yeah, well, but both Kalu and Dan, and I'll speak about both of them in, in this sense, they're both so gifted offensively. I mean, um, they, they both do things every day in practice, and you go, wow, you know, that Kalu can do things at that position that we just had, we didn't have a year ago. You know, he handles the ball, he passes, um, he can score it on the box, he can drive it and score it, um, he, he, he can get to the offensive board. You know, I, w- I want him to do that a little bit more, but he's shown the ability to do it at a high level. Um, and, and Dan has moments every day that, you know, you see his talent and his ability and what we are so excited about when we recruited him. Both of them probably think I'm the devil right now uh, because of what I'm demanding from them defensively because I think they both have a ways to go, right? And I think we our team needs both of them to take some huge steps defensively. Um, I think they're both very capable. So even though they, again, they probably think during practice, you know, I'm an evil person and that type of thing. But I, I think it's the ultimate sign of respect because I think they're both so gifted that if they can take the steps that I believe they need to take defensively, I think they can both really impact this team. I know uh, last year around the same time, you weren't able to implement a little bit of everything that you wanted to at this time. Um, given this year, have you had the opportunity to maybe implement a little bit more at a quicker process and pace that you would like uh, with these years' team? Yes, Kevin, yeah, no doubt. Um, certainly still not to a place where I want us to be, you know, where we're able to focus on. I, I still want us to get a little further, but relative to last year, no question. I mean, we've been able to – we're so much further along in any area than we were a year ago this time. Uh, but but still quite a bit that we got to install here over the next you know two weeks or so. Defensively, what uh, would be something new implemented that we we could expect from the Steelers team? Well, we spent more time on zone, you know, than we ever spent at this point last year. And excuse me, I do think this is a team that should be able to zone a little bit with its length and versatility. Um, so that that'll be something we'll play around with here and there. You know, we'll, we will put in some pressure, some pressing, whether it's all for our full court man to man stuff or some of our three quarter court zone stuff. So we we tinkered with that right around the first game last year and just didn't feel great about it. And we'll start tinkering with that now leading into the first game. And I, I do think this team's more built to do it. There's certainly more foundational aspects to how we've been practicing defense to get us ready to do it. You said you don't want to get in the game and have that adversity trying to create it beforehand. But the way college basketball schedules are with some of those early bye games, is there a temptation to like work on some things in an actual game during the season, or do you try to go in, you know, completely sure of what you want to do? You know, I, I don't know if I, I think about it in the sense that you asked the question, but I do think early in the year, you you are try, still trying to learn your team 
in games, right? It's, it's, listen, I'd love us to be every single action we want to run. I want the rotation perfect, you know. Like I want it all in place the first game, and that that's never happened. You know, even when I've had guys that are in their third or fourth year, you've never been there. Um, so I do think early in the season you're still trying to learn your team. The, the difference between, you know, this time – uh, now or this time last year and now is like I, I felt like it was January and we were still trying to figure that kind of stuff out last year I think we're much further along but yes the November and December the, you know I'm no doubt we'll, we'll have to continue to make adjustments and changes to what we're doing what, what kind of zone is uh, a coach is Wes Miller are you three one three one match up <laughs> do you have a preference or uh that's funny I uh <laughs> I know I knew you liked asking that question. I, when I first got into coaching, I would tell people I hated zone. You know, I just hate it's just not my DNA. And then I, I learned that I like zone a lot more. Or I, what, what was the the way to say it? That I um, I I hate losing. So I like zone more than I hate losing. So if zone's the best way to help us win, I, I can embrace it, that type of thing. But, no, it, I mean, it's never been my nature. And if you notice how we practice every day, and you, some of you guys have been to practice, we're going to build everything around our base man-to-man -man principles. Um, but I, I do think if you can be really good in those principles, you know, moving to the ball, defending the ball one-on-one, -on -one, making shots difficult and contesting shots, those principles can apply to any defense, right, any any defense you play. Um, so I, to me it's not what zone do I like, it's what zone makes the most sense for our team and, and for our personnel. And the same principles that we have in man-to-man -man will apply to whatever defense that we play. So, no, I'm not going to tell you what zone we've been working on with this team because I don't want somebody that we're going to play against to watch this press conference and impact their scouting report. Uh, whether on the court or off the court in the locker room, how important is John from a, a leadership perspective going into year two here? Extremely, Justin. He's – Dave DeJulius has – he's really taken a step in a leadership sense. And I, I don't – I don't really like to sit on the podium and declare who the leaders are. I think that stuff works itself out naturally. Um, but to, to date, I've been extremely impressed with Dave DeJulius. Um, his, his approach has just been different. It just sets a tone for the rest of the team. I mean, you know, it isn't just one time now, but there's, I mean, this morning we walked in to walk through some things before practice this afternoon. We had him in there at 9 and 10 this morning. And we had a pretty hard practice yesterday now. Like, we pushed him hard. And Dave DeJulius walks in the gym, and he's fully lathered in sweat to walk in for our walkthrough at 9. And I'm going, what the heck did he do? When did he get here? And that's happened probably 10 or 15 times. I mean, his approach has just been different. Uh, I, I hope it continues. And I think it's given him a, a level of leadership that the other guys just respect the way he goes about it. John Newman would be the, the guy that I think about next. He's really changed his approach and committed himself on and off the floor and certainly as a fifth-year senior and a guy that's played in the NCAA tournament and, you know, all the experience he has, not to mention the way he plays the game. I mean, when you play the game in a way that you sacrifice your body and some of the flashy stuff for the dirty stuff, I think people tend to respect you, and I think our guys really respect John Newman. Coach, is there any principles offensively this this close to the season that you guys are feeling like you can lean on early in the year as you build out the whole offense? You know, I, I don't know if I have a specific answer to that, but I, you know, listen, I, I think we're gonna. This will be boring for people that have been around me. We're gonna try to play with some pace, right? We're gonna try to get out and beat people down the floor and get great shots before the defense gets set. And I hope we get easy baskets and I hope we get inside out threes and paint touches and things of that nature. Um, I, I think some of the obvious stuff from a year ago, we're going to rely on David DeJulius in a ball screen. 
Like, we're not silly, right? He's pretty dang good in the spread ball screen. We're going to rely on Jeremiah Davenport's ability to space the floor, shoot the ball, and attack closeouts and post up and use his versatility and size, right, his offensive rebounding. And then we're going to rely on some of these other guys that, that, that have, you know, returned and developed their games or – or some of these guys that they come in with some real offensive firepower. So, I mean, no tricks to it. Um, I, I do hope that we, you know, get more easy baskets this year. We've worked really hard on how we're going to do that throughout the summer and the fall. Um, I do hope um, we take better shots and, and get better shots for our team. I do hope we're more aggressive on the offensive board. Um, I hope we get fouled a lot more. I mean, those are some of the things that we've emphasized in our coaching and also the structure of how we've set up our offense. Hey, one more. Is there a reason you don't like zone? Anything in particular? Oh, no, not really. I'm uh, Honestly, Chad's probably just trying to have fun with me over here. I, it, early on, I just was kind of, we're going to be a man-to-man -man team. And, you know, I, I do really believe in the principles of basketball being played man to man. Um, so early on, I'd, I'd let my pride get in the way. Right now, I, what I like is winning, guys. And so if I like winning and I like good tough nosed defense and rebounding. So if if the best way to do that is to play a you know one one two five six zone, then we'll do that. Right, whatever it takes. Questions for Jeremiah. JD, how you feeling? Two weeks from the start of the season. Obviously, a big season coming up for you in this program. What has the preseason been like, and, and how do you feel like your game is looking heading in 14 days, 13 days away from the season? Uh, 14 days away. You know, obviously, I can't. Can't wait, you know. We can't wait, and um, <clears throat> been working on a lot this off season. You know, this overall, you know, shooting, ball handling, whatever, you know, basketball skills in general. And um, I feel like it's gonna be a great season. You know, with the guys we brought in, with the guys we already had. You know, it's been a good combination. You know, and, and it will continue to be a good combination. You know, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So you're looking to make that transition into a, having a big season this year. What were some of those key improvements you were working on this offseason, and how have those helped you prepare for this season? Well, ball handling, you know, and being more efficient, you know, getting, getting up more shots, you know, picking, where, picking what to shoot, when to shoot, you know, those areas, and many other things, but those specific. You mentioned some of the new guys coming in. How have you guys been gelling so far? What's the reception been like around them? Uh, it's been great, you know. They, they intelligent guys, you know. So, they know what they're stepping into. You know, high level basketball, Cincinnati basketball, you know. <clears throat> and we're gonna try to keep building the tradition here. So, which new guy do you think is gonna make a really big impact the fastest? Uh, everybody, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> from from last year to this year, uh, with the all seasons and preseason. What do you feel like is the biggest difference that y'all as a team uh, walking into this season? Hmm. I say growth and experience. You know, that's the big thing. You know, we got experienced guys that's played all over, you know, different schools, you know, coming in, combining with the guys that already been here, that played years, like myself, three, I played three years here. So <clears throat> I guess I consider myself a vet. And, you know, guys like Kalu, you know, his, his last year played on Dominion. You know, other guys like Odie came last year, played last year, but he was at Wake Forest, you know, played a couple years there, now here. So I feel like our growth and our experience, it'll it'll be very different this year. The coaches have, have talked to me a little bit about your growth mm -hmm. off the court. Just talk about what kind of what you've gone through this off season that has – maybe changed your outlook on things mm -hmm. and, and brought you to a new place as a leader and, and veteran now? Yeah, you know, every year, you know, 
I speak on growth a lot. You know, people around me speak on growth, you know, just elevating and seeing what I can do to mature at the highest level. So, and also, you know, having God in my life is a big deal because <laughs> without him, nothing is possible for us. So <clears throat> I made a big change in that, you know, giving my life to him. So that's pretty much it, just growth in general. What are you excited most about in terms of the versatility of this team? Obviously, there's a little siloed last year, a lot of you, a lot of David, and now it seems like you guys are going to be able to really spread it around and not have defenses be able to key on, on really anybody. Yeah, um, I'll say just our length, our length and our strength in numbers, you know. We had a lot of numbers last year, but this year it's like all around, you know, everywhere, you know, the three spot, the two spot, the four spot, the five spot, you know, it's just more. More athleticism, I will say. Just talk about the new faces in the locker room. Obviously, you bring in three freshmen, three transfers. How has that been gelling off the court as well as on the court, obviously, with guys like Landers, uh, Rob, bring in freshmen, Dan, and all of them. How have you guys been able to develop off the court as well as on the court this offseason? Yeah, well, you know, trying to get where we need to go. We have no choice but to build, you know, playing with, playing with a guy like – playing for a guy like Coach West, you know. It's just – Basketball guys, like you know, we just guys trying to hoop, you know, trying to trying to get better. So it's like we already had that connection before we got here, you know. Especially Dan, you know, he's been following us since he committed. You know, Rob, you know, he he's new, but he know what he's getting into. Cincinnati basketball, you know. So I feel like the guys that's already been here, you know, we we made an exception to accept the guys, you know, on and off the court. It's just human beings. I know he's sitting in here, so no pressure, but what does Kalu bring on the court? And then how well has he been able to mesh and gel with you guys who are already here? Mm -hmm. Well, on the court, he's a big presence. You know, you see how how big he is physically. And, and on the offense end, you know, he's a he's a he's a bucket getter, you know, I'm not gonna lie. You know, it's a it's a big difference, you know, having a having a four slash five guy like his size, you know, it's gonna be a a nightmare for people, you know, some nights, you know. So, yeah, that's that's what I say about Kalu. Anything else? All right. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for the birthday boy, Kalu? <laughs> Appreciate it. First off, your birthday on the side. Um, this is a program with a lot of history, you know, Final Fours and, you know, Nick Van Exel, Oscar Robertson. How much did you know about that history before coming here? And how much, if at all, did that history play in your decision to come here? Yeah, so, like, I'm, like, a big basketball fan. So, like, all that and all the history, like, Oscar Robertson, Nick Van Exel, yeah, I was familiar with that. So, obviously, my last year, uh, playing college basketball, playing in a program that, you know, the fans care about a lot and a winning program is really dedicated in this city. So that's definitely the main reason why I came here. So, yeah. What kind of role change are you looking at in terms of what you did at ODU versus what you're going to do this year at UC? Uh, uh, pace of play, uh, really just getting up and down more. So that's really the main thing, just getting up and down more. Uh, at ODU play, you know what I mean, more of a, I would say a slower tempo, but just getting up and down more. Talk about that off season for you. Obviously, your relationship with West Miller is building as you head into your final season, your season. But just talk about your relationship with Coach Rayfeld. Obviously, this is your first season here. Just talk about how you have been able to develop under Coach Rayfeld in the uh, strength and conditioning room. Yeah. So when I decided to put my name in the portal and then coming on on a, on a visit, uh, Coach Rayfeld was one of the main reasons why I decided to come to UC. Just knowing how much I needed to get my body kind of. Improved from last season, the things that I saw and just seeing what things that Rayfield kind of offered, I feel like it was great for me to take my game to the next level. So he was definitely a, a huge, a huge tool. You were close to going to Greensboro out of high school, right? They, they recruited you hard. Um, how much did that help in getting Cincinnati in the door? And how seamless has it made that transition that you had already had a relationship with the staff? Uh, it helped a lot, just because familiar, familiarity. I mean, your last year, you want to go somewhere you're comfortable with, somewhere, you know what I mean? You're sure that you can have success there. So it helped a lot, knowing a lot of basically everybody on the coaching staff already. So that was definitely a huge, a huge tool in the coming here. So, yeah. 
what are the biggest strengths in your game, would you say, Kalu? And then what's the, the biggest thing you're working on that you've been working on this offseason? Uh, biggest strengths, I would say, uh, obviously, being low, presence down low, scoring, um, versatility. Um, I would say those are my biggest strengths. Uh, working on, I mean, a little bit of everything from uh, shooting the ball, becoming a great defender, just a little bit of everything. So I never stop working. I guess like working a little bit of everything. How tough is that defensive transition been? Because Wes is a guy that that harps on defense. He said you and you and Dan probably hate him <laughs> for how much he's been pushing you in practice. But what's yeah. that like been? You know, work, learning yeah. under a guy that puts so much emphasis there. Uh, I mean, my other school, uh, he was a big uh, at older man. My other head coach, he was a big uh, defensive emphasis guys. But it, it, in my opinion, it was two different types of defenses. So I mean, it's been challenging, but it's it's a good challenging. So uh, there's definitely some. Something that I need to add to my game, so it's a it's a, it's a good it's a good love hate. So yeah. Have you been able to see any parts of the city since you've been here? Any any favorite restaurants? Any favorite places you've been so far in Cincy? Um, favorite restaurants? I don't know. I'm a guy who likes to cook, so I like to cook my own food. So I go out to eat sometimes, but from time to time, I'm usually making my own food. So yeah. What you got? Uh, you guys, my 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 roommates, I make some some good salmon. So you guys know, yeah. Do you like Skyline? Have they? Have you? Mm, had I ain't gonna lie, no. That's, <laughs> uh, that's not that's not uh, true. Uh, is there is there a player that you um, kind of mold your game? You know, as you're as you're modeling your game and trying to get better, is there someone you look up to or look at film and study to try to take some things from? In terms of like the NBA? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's uh, NBA players I look up to. Uh, I look up to Paul Millsap, uh, Draymond Green, Grant Williams. Those are like the three guys uh, I would say I may look up to. Good. All right. Thanks, Appreciate it.